Cafe. Anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast? I don't know. I mean, I guess it is kind of daily. If daily means two days in between. Mike's Daily Podcast. It's not even every other day. It's what we call a... a Something Try And try daily Maybe that's it Mike's Daily Try Daily Podcast That's the podcast You're listening to And this song Won't last much longer Cause it's over Technically Awesome That's all I had Mike's Daily Podcast But it's good to be here today I was going to bring you one On Monday and Tuesday And things happened Like I had to cook I had to Mike's Make a Daily dinner because I was hungry podcast. and other people weren't making dinner yeah. and I said if, if well if they're not going to make it then I got to make it and I did it I made something with tofu yesterday I know I know it's it's amazing for a 50 something year old man who ate really too much fat stuff in his life and meat and is paying the price when he goes to the doctor and the doctor says, I'm going to put you on Lipidor or Cresslor or Slobblor. I'm not going to go on that stuff. Well, I will if I have to, but I'm going to try not to. So I had a little tofu. And here's the thing. The thing to remember, and they tell you this, and it's important to remember, if you're going to fight tofu with every fiber of your being, just remember that little fibrous white stuff is actually... It's a sponge for flavor. So whatever you put into it, it will... T- well, let's, I'll put a steak on top of it. And it'll taste like a steak. So I'll eat the tofu to taste like a steak. And I'll eat the steak. All right, well, whatever your plan is, the, it's, it is amazing in that it can absorb flavor. So you just put a lot of interesting sauces and whatnot, and you've got a good... That's what, that's what I found out by watching several YouTube videos. That was very helpful and not having... And here's today's podcast picture. The picture today is not an AI produced picture. I'm hearing about that. I'm like, okay, good job, AI. No, this is actually a picture I took of Patches the Cat recently hanging out in the backyard. See him in his wonderful gaze <laughs> His I don't care gaze As some cats have See it at mikesdailypodcast.com You know who would not like that Is the late great Basil the Boxer And look at this He's gonna bark Isn't that amazing? Yes Right here on this here podcast Right here at Cafe Anyway Somewhere in Podcastro Valley The last place on earth He is objecting to cats As he does So, I've just had a lot of uh, thought in my brain thinking things. And uh, I've been thinking a lot about uh, AI, artificial intelligence. And I watched a little bit of the interview that was done with the guy from Google, the very, very rich person. And I've been absorbing what he had to say and then playing with AI a little bit. Here's an interesting thing And I've already been a huge proponent of Bing You can listen to all my podcasts All 2,593 of them Oh yeah, today's FF episode 2,593 2,593 If you go back and listen to Somewhere amidst all of them So there's a prize for you If you listen to all of them That's that you're entertained That's the prize And somewhere back there I know I mentioned Bing that I used it because it gave you points And eventually like after Three or five years you can get a ten dollar Gift certificate to use On Amazon And I've enjoyed that well all of a sudden Bing just shot up to the top of the charts By being one of the first search engines To use artificial intelligence And chat bots Now The thing I don't really see and everybody Making a big deal about it and Google's got Its own and that's why they did the 60 Minutes interview Because Google said Hey 60 Minutes You want an exclusive interview And 60 Minutes was like Sure Let's do it 
And they did. And then they got a lot of views on YouTube. And, oh, yeah, by the way, YouTube is owned by Google. But I think, just from what I've seen with AI, from what I can see Bard can do, I am not... I'm not, like, frightened. I'm slightly blown away, but just in a general way, I'm blown away with, uh, if we go back to Google... When it first started being a search engine that you could use, or Bing, or any search engine, and go, ah, I wonder what uh, what's a what's a good recipe for tofu, and you put it actually. Let me do a sidetrack there about that very topic. When you do, Chat GBT and ask it for a recipe, for tofu, it gets it's not a straight answer. I prefer more the search engine. Because search engines will show you all these websites you can go to. And you can ignore the ones that are the ads. And it says right next to it, it's an ad. So somebody paid for your eyeballs to see that. And I see that. I'm like, no, I want to go a little bit further down. Pick what I want to pick. But that's the problem is we don't scroll down. It's so easy to just scroll down and go to another page. And go to the next page and find something. Avoid the ads. But you find a recipe and there you go. Well, I asked the chat GBT for a recipe and it said, you can try all kinds of things that are really delicious and you will like them. Put a little bit of this on that. And, and you know what? I ended up going to YouTube and looking up a video. So in the end, Google won and beat Bing. But I don't see it as something ticking over the world. We immediately jumped to, in our minds to Terminator. Or one of those other dystopic movies where robots have figured stuff out in their brains and they're smarter than us and they, oh, look, look, they're machines, they never die. That is a quantum leap. Ah, another interesting sci fi show. Anyway. As we go outside a cafe, anyway, we're bringing you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth. It's a quantum leap to think that because really what we're just dealing with is what we already have. It's a search engine. And in some ways, I find it a very, not very useful search engine. So then I said, oh, okay. So people are saying you're supposed to talk to it. And it gives you these answers. Like we're at some circus freak show. And, oh, ask it a question. Let's see what it will say. One of those arcade games. What am I thinking about? I'm thinking about something I saw at a circus or an arcade or an amusement park where you ask it a question. Oh, yeah. Wasn't there a robot at the World's Fair? This is way before my time. Sometime in the early 60s. I was born in the late 60s. There was a World's Fair in Chicago. Maybe that was the 40s. I forget. But there was the, the, the robot and people would ask it questions and it would answer. And it wasn't a computer answering. It probably was a guy hidden in the back area or was it or was it no computers didn't move that fast so that would probably be impossible but we get we it's it's a sideshow amusement is what this ai is right now it's like when you ask questions of alexa or siri or okay google or whatever cafe whatever I just turned on my phone. <laughs> you know what kind of phone I have. And it's recording everything I'm saying right now. Let's see how long it goes. It's recording everything. Okay. Which, by the way, I thought about transcribing this podcast and all future podcasts. But I thought, who the heck has that much time to read this? This craziness. It's, a, it's much more useful in a listening experience environment the point is I asked this this uh, po- sorry I'm not sure if you were talking to me I'll disregard what you said <laughs> but let us know if we can help see there's an AI right there that's been around for quite a while what's the big deal is what I'm saying but so I asked this uh, chat GBT thing tell me a joke and he couldn't do it. 
I said, what, what, or no, I told it a joke and I go, do you, do you understand what humor is? And it didn't know it was, it was confused. So I'm thinking that AI right now has no sense of humor. It's, I think uh, Alexa can tell you a joke if you ask it, but <sighs> what am I just being naive? I think the people that are being alarmist are just, they need to take it down a notch and they're going to look like idiots when their videos get looked at at the end of the year. And eh, that guy was a little bit too crazy. We, him ranting and raving Hey you know what today is It is Well as I'm recording this It's the 19th So it's late in the day The front panel will close automatically And I believe the 19th Is National Banana Day That's right It's also National Hanging Out Day Which is what we're doing Outside a cafe anyway Somewhere in Podcaster Valley It's National Garlic Day Hey here's a little thing I've discovered you don't need to always mince garlic. Just break open the cloves, take your hand, push it against the table, the, the, the counter, and it causes the skin around the garlic clove to come off. You unwrap it, you put it in the pan or in the oven with a little, maybe a little bit of olive oil. Oh my gosh, so good and so good for you. It is a great antioxidant and has all these other great things about it. Helps your heart. When I went to Florida and we got picked up by at the airport, at the Daytona Beach Airport, we had to get a Uber. And at that late at night, we, we couldn't find the Uber never showed up. So we just grabbed this guy in a taxi and one of his hands wasn't working. He had a withered hand. I don't know what the medical appropriate term is. So he's driving a manual shift car, a stick shift with one hand and somehow smoking a cigarette and somehow telling us his life story. Oh, because my lovely lady friend has the ability to get people to tell their life stories. Probably why she's a good therapist. And he's practically getting us into an accident. Oh, and he told us, yeah, we got, I got into a bike, a motorcycle accident, but I'm fine. I'm fine now. I'm okay. And then he said, I take garlic every day and it's the best thing. I take garlic and it's helped, it, it, it helped me cure cancer. And he had a bunch of other things he said garlic did. So there you go. That's what Today was Garlic Day, and I live not too far, maybe about an hour and a half drive from Gilroy, California, which is known as the garlic capital of the world. So even better news there. We missed, oh, yesterday was National An Animal Crackers Day. What? How on earth did I miss that? Yes, there is a day for everything. Baby, one of these days, I'll tell you a day and you'll be, oh, that's my most favorite thing in the world. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for telling me today is National Custard Day. I got an interesting email today and I'd like to read it to you. It's from someone who works in finances. And he wrote this. He said, at least according to T.S. Eliot in his epic 1921 poem The Wasteland he reflects on the horrors of the recent global war death and suffering are all that spring brings us according to his remarkable tome tome tomb however way you want to say that on the other hand this is what the old far farmer's almanac has to say about the month of April hark the cock crows and you bright star Tell us the day himself is not far, says Charles, Con says Charles Cotton. And one other, oh, one other interesting thing, if I may, that this person writes. While a bumblebee may not be the first insect you see in spring, it is likely to be the first sound you hear. The buzz starts on some hushed morning over snow-bent grass or sun-washed earth, 
split by swelling bulbs. These big bumblebees are fertilized queens, sole survivors from last autumn. The flight of each is slow and purposeful, not wild and erratic, as the operatic score flight of the bumblebee. The queen is searching for a nest site, perhaps an abandoned chipmunk burrow. Which she'll stuff with grass and moss Next she'll make a thimble sized wax pot And fill it with nectar Finally She'll knead pollen Knead it like you would knead dough And nectar into Bee bread Yes bee bread The nectar will sustain her while she is brooding Larvae will eat the bread The bumblebee's fur Will allow her to live Yes cause you know Notice how they're so furry And what is the The deal with them Being like Not Um What What's the Aerodynamically designed They shouldn't Technically be able to fly How the bumblebee Humbled me The bumblebee's fur Will allow her to live In colder climes Than most other insects one species, the Bombus polaris, has been reported 62 miles from the North Pole. Yes, bumblebees in the North Pole. North Americans are fond of bumblebees. They're harbingers of fine weather, resemble winged eddy bears. I think he meant teddy bears. And are so good natured that getting one to sting you is a major undertaking. Really? Yet we're so scared of them. But most important, they're ours, unlike honeybees. They are native bumblebees. Fascinating. Oh, I'm saving this. That's such a cool piece of info. I wrote the guy back and said, you are a poet. Thank you so much. It's so good to get something like that every now and then, isn't it? Just the best. Okay, and one other thing here. SpaceX tried but scrubbed the launch of its huge Starship Space Launch System Because I guess Elon Musk, uh, uh, Elon Musk is a huge fan Of We Built the City on Rock and Roll So he's got this huge Starship Space Launch System And Sarah, Sarah No time is a good time for goodbyes my lovely lady friend and I are going to be having an anniversary soon And she got me a boombox with a CD player in it What, Mike? Why do you need that? Because computers don't have them anymore Plus I want to sit outside and listen to a CD An actual CD Because I, I, I don't know if you noticed this or not a cafe anyway One of the walls is completely It's all CDs Over two thousand CDs I got a lot a lot of country a lot of rock a lot of all kinds of stuff but yes yeah, so what a wonderful wonderful thing oh and Volkswagen is getting into the electric vehicle race they have the ID7 it's the new flagship electric vehicle that they have, Volkswagen with more than a 300 mile range they should call it the e-beetle But You know They're not listening to me Look at me Look at me Look at me And listen Look who else is here Outside a cafe anyway People other than me Hello my grand It's Shelly It's too hard to get Chef supervisor Wow that's really amazing My grand You know Erica Badu Is going on a 25 city tour And she's calling it Unfollow me <laughs> Yes, that's the tour The Unfollow Me Tour Wow That's great, Mike Matthews She has a beautiful voice And she does great songs She does Yes So I thought that I would share that Look who else is here Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floor Man And this is John Deere, the engineer, Mike It seems like you're full of wisdom today <laughs> Yeah yeah, I guess I am a little bit today. I just think that we need to calm down a little bit about AI. And oh, Zillennials apparently are racking up record debt. Financial avoidance leads to retail therapy. 
<laughs> Self-soothing with an Amazon order. Rob Black of Rob Black and Your Money I produce his podcast. He wrote this. He said, U.S. consumer debt hit a record high of $4.8 trillion in February as inflation-strapped Americans took it out high-interest loans and maxed out credit cards. Uh-oh. And I thought that the z were being good, that they were being careful. But apparently news on that changes every day. The IOU blues are especially bad for the younger generations. Pricey cold brew habits. Yes. Why are those cold brews so expensive? They're delicious, but no, you can make it at home. Millennials average credit card debt rose nearly 30% in March from a year earlier, hitting a whopping 58 thousand dollars 5.8k and yesterday was tax day and i was told by so many of my friends no it is tax day yeah it's the deadline and then my cpa said oh no it's not till october so i don't know who who is uh (laughs) my lovely lady friend jumped on it and got her tax return taken care of but yeah I don't know what to tell you. I'm all confused on that topic. So Gen Z's average credit card debt soared 40% as the... You will travel into the incredible universe. Wait. Magnification. What's this? Sean Hall's and Celsius habits weighed down balances. Magnification. Okay, maybe that was AI written, that particular sentence. Sticky inflation, high interest rates, dwindling savings have fueled anxiety. Psychologists say that ignoring your finances and overspending to cope with stress is typically among younger generations. TikTok had this particular video. Social media has exacerbated Zillennial's splurge cycle. And over 60% of users said they regretted a social-inspired impulse purchase. Well, there we go. It's so easy to spend on some things, isn't it? My weakness is when I drive to and from work, I pass a lot of fast food places. And I so want, especially when they send me coupons in the mail. Oh, I've been fighting it. I've been pretty good. I've been winning against that battle. And then going home and making delicious tofu. Yes, that's my reward is delicious tofu. It absorbs all the flavor. Whatever you put on it, it's amazing. But bada bam, it's gotten the flavor. You just put whatever you what's your most favorite taste thing taste in the world that you love to taste? Put that on a tofu. It just soaks it all up. It's a sponge of happiness. And I hope this has been a sponge of happiness for you today. By the way, eons and eons ago, in 2001, I was at a party with my uh, future then, future ex-wife, I should say. And I'm at this party and one of her high school friends was at this party and his name is Zachary Levi, and now he's Shazam. And I have not gone out and seen the first Shazam. I did not watch Chuck, but I did meet Zachary Levi way back then, and he knew who I was because if you listen to the last podcast, you'll hear a little bit of it. There was a radio show that I did for 11 years called the Santa Fe Cafe, and he listened. He goes, oh, you're Matt Michaels, because I went by that name. And he was all excited to meet me. Little did I know that this guy, I he was not on that sitcom he did was that called less than zero or was that the 80s movie with uh, andrew mccarthy one is something with a zero in it and then he did chuck and now he's shazam and i watched the honest trailers of the latest shazam movie and i'm sorry zach there ain't no way i'm gonna see that no everything that i despise about superhero movies everything that they become It's all crammed into there. And there needs to be some fixing going on with how superhero movies are made and with what Disney Plus is doing with all of their, oh, let's grab some obscure show movie 
thing that we're known for and we'll milk it for all it's worth and turn it into something horrific. I was just watching. Uh, wait, what? What? Some Muppet thing. Oh, yeah. They're doing something about the, the band from the Muppets with Animal in it. And I'm like, Disney, this is not what Jim Henson wanted. What are you doing? Anyway, cafe anyway. That's all I have. I just threw down the pen. So that's me throwing down the gauntlet and I'm done. Next show, it'll be the wonderful Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player and the brewmaster. If you'd like to chime in and add or subtract or criticize or comment or sing or dance or say right or any of those other things I totally am annoyed by and despise. You can call me 510-228-4640, 510-228-4640. We'll try and do another podcast tomorrow. We'll keep our fingers crossed and hope that Mike has time and that hunger doesn't stop him. And with more ways to reach me, it's A-Frame. Mike's TV Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikestvpodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.